Hello and welcome to another episode of Bevy Basics. Today's episode is going to be a quick one, focusing on DREF and its counterpart, DREF Mu. Let's start by explaining what DREF is and why Bevy adds specific derives around using DREF in Rust. In Rust, whenever you use the ampersand operator, we create a reference to the data rather than owning it ourselves. And this is where the ref in DREF comes from. A reference is similar to a pointer in other languages, except that it is immutable by default. To modify the value behind the reference, we need to make a mutable reference, which is indicated by the ampersand mute rather than just having an ampersand and has its corresponding DREF mute derive. So how does references in Rust relate to the DREF derive provided by Bevy? As the name suggests, DREF is just short for dereferencing. In practical terms, it allows a reference to be converted into a reference of a different type. In Bevy, this is particularly useful when you have extra data contained inside a struct for bookkeeping, but otherwise the struct only represents a single value. This can be seen in Bevy's name component, where it contains a hash of the string, which allows for quick comparisons by comparing the hashes. Only if the hash is matched does it do a full string compare. But DREF allows us to continue treating name as if it was just a string, because when we use DREF, it returns us a reference to a string pointing to the internal string rather than the whole data structure itself. This takes on a whole other aspect when dealing with components in Bevy's ECS. Let's explore a common scenario where DREF and DREF mute can significantly simplify our code, the new type pattern. In Bevy's ECS, each component attached to an entity must be unique. Sometimes we only want to use a small data type like a VEC3 as a component, but we can't attach a VEC3 directly because it doesn't implement component trait. And even if it did, other systems might be using the VEC3 to do their own thing, such as lots of systems use Bevy's transforms, and this could lead to data collisions. To solve this, we wrap VEC3 in a new type, a struct that simply only holds one value. The other option would be to completely re-implement the behavior of the vector on our struct itself, which is overly complicated for something so simple. Now, by driving component on our struct, we can now insert it onto any entity. This does come with the slight complication of any time we want to access the underlying data, we need to use dot zero. However, constantly using dot zero can be cumbersome and make the code less readable. This is where DREF comes into play. By deriving DREF as well as component, we can now treat new type as if it were the type it contains, meaning we don't need the dot zero everywhere to access the data. Any operation that could be performed on the original data type can now be performed on the new type as well. This is also true for DREF root mute when you need to modify the underlying data. Because the example I'm providing here only has a single type inside of its new type, we can call DREF directly. In order to call DREF on more complicated types, you need to do extra syntactic sugar that I'll cover in just a minute. With DREF derived, you can now use the new type as if it was simply the type it contains. This means we can perform all the operations that we would on the underlying struct without needing to call dot zero in between. This can lead to much nicer code. As you can see, we can remove most of the dot zeros from our example. This is not a magic bullet, however. Since technically it is still its own type, we do sometimes still need to call in the dot zero in order to get to the underlying data. For example, when I'm reassigning the target, we need to call dot zero since we want to assign the value, not override the target itself. Okay, now to cover the more complex situation where your type has more than one field. In such situations, you can still use DREF, but you need to specify the field that which DREF will return. To do this, you simply attach an extra meta tag of hash DREF before the type that will be returned. So in this example, it is directly above the cell, which means that the cell IVEC2 will be returned. If I was using just a tuple struct, I would place it directly before the type, so dot zero, or if I wanted to return the second type before the, before the dot one position. The DREF and DREF mute traits in Rust provide a powerful way to simplify access to underlying data, especially when using the new type pattern in Bevy. By deriving DREF, you can make your components much more ergonomic and your code more readable avoiding the need to manually access inner values whenever your component is simply a wrapper, or even when it's a more complex type that has bookkeeping values. Using DREF helps you write cleaner and more intuitive code that other people will be able to understand and maintain more easily. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Hopefully you've learned a really useful tool for your bevy arsenal. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe so you don't miss future content. And I'll see you all in the next episode of Bevy Basics. I'd like to thank my Kofi supporter for their contribution, as well as mentioning that I do have channel memberships if anyone would like to join. You'll get special icons for when I'm streaming and other perks. The links to all this can be found in the description, as well as my Discord if you'd like to come and join and talk there. I don't know. I don't know how to end this fucking video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.